Hello everyone, I um, hope you're having a good bank holiday weekend, enjoyed the coronation and everything I did. Okay, I'm making a bit of a different type of fish pie if you like tonight. I thought I don't do a lot with fish with you in the Ninja, so I thought I'm going to do this one. We're using cod loin, nice chunky solid fish. Um, there's just about, uh, I think, it, think each piece is about five ounces, so ten ounces. Um, and I'll show you what I do with that shortly. We're using um, red potatoes and I'm going to slice them and parboil them. Not too thin on this one. Unlike sometimes I'll say I want them very thinly sliced. These are not too thin. Probably about a quarter of an inch in thickness, guys. Um, when I want really thin potato slices, I use my mandolin. But this for this recipe, we do need a little bit of thickness there. So that's about what we're looking for. Okay, that's our potato sliced up. Um, boiling water, just, just over them, just cover them. Put a little bit of salt in there. Not a lot because the salsa verde that goes with this, which I'm going to take you through shortly, has a lot of salt in it. Okay, that's going on to boil now for, as I say, seven to eight minutes. Now we're going to handle the cod. I've got my fish board out. Pick up your cod. And although this has been filleted beautifully, go along where you feel there may be. If you feel any anything sticking out, it could be um, a bone. And I can't feel anything in that. Do the same with your other fillet. So I don't want the chunks too small. You want nice chunks of fish in this. Beautiful cod. This cod is expensive. Um, so you can use monkfish, although monkfish, I think most fish is quite expensive. But it wants to be a fairly... This wouldn't work with a very flaky fish. So that's going to be for one dish. And same again with this one. If your fish is very wet, take a paper towel... This is not very wet, but I'm still going to just dab it before it goes on top of our potatoes and things because you want your fish going in dry. Now, if you've been using frozen fish, you quite possibly find that the fish then holds a lot of water. Okay, get rid of that. That's our fish done. Just going to wash my hands, guys, and come back to that in a moment and check on the potatoes be back in a second these have done enough so they've had their time um, you've got to be so careful it's very easy for you to end up with a pile of mush here so you sometimes better go in on the side where they're a little bit undercooked rather than let them go too far but they look fine we're going to be able to handle those that's what you need to do so as soon as they're a little bit cool so I can actually pick them out and lay them in the dish we're in business the thing that you actually make first in this recipe is the salsa verde. So salsa verde, um, I believe, means green sauce. Lots of variations. This variation today, and I will list all the ingredients, the full recipe I'll put up on my website after I got through doing this. Okay, so inside here we've got a clove of garlic. We've got um, sea salt, two anchovy fillets, a teaspoonful of mustard. I used the French mustard and then we've got capers, we've got basil, we've got parsley, we've got olive oil, lemon juice, lemon zest and black pepper. Quite a few ingredients there but it gives you a big flavour profile. Okay, So this is why because it's got the anchovies and the capers in there, you've got to be very careful with your seasoning on your fish and on your potatoes. You don't want this don't want to end up too salty. Buttered dishes, you're well, well used to seeing these dishes that everybody's now using. Okay, so I'm going to get these potatoes out then. One thing about salsa verde, it can stand. Now we go to our fish. Just share it out between your two dishes. Looks perfect. Now we're going to put half of this salsa verde this dish half and the other dish pepper that's about the only season I wouldn't add salt but pepper's fine and now we go in covering it all up 
that looks quite good those can go in the uh, air fryer and make like little uh, sliced fried potatoes air fried potatoes okay final step we're going to cover this with parmesan a little bit more pepper on the top there okay my good old silicone baskets cheers everyone just a pre-dinner drink <laughs> oh my god that's lovely beautiful rosé from Provence right okay there we go I'll take those out okay guys we're going to set it on roast there we go and I think I'll take it to 180 and um, I'm going to give it 17 minutes and I'm going to go up the match and we're away okay guys they're out the oven well <laughs> after the ninja just as I expected them to be um, so I'm going to get them out on the plate put some broccoli with them and we'll try them and hopefully they're cooked I've tested them with my thermometer they've come in at uh, 71 so they're well cooked so fit to eat okay just bear with me for one moment while I serve them up on the plates lovely pieces of fish Okay, guys. Mm. That was beautiful. You're just picking up on not it's perfectly seasoned. It's not over salty. I was really, really worried it was going to be salty. Let me just take try potato as well. Mm. The potatoes have picked up the herbs the basil, the lemon, the garlic. It's beautiful and it's light. It doesn't feel heavy. Quite, you know, sometimes when you have fish pie and you've got your mash on the top. It can be quite a heavy dish. This is lovely and light. Feels very summery, which is something I wanted to achieve. Now we've got to do something quite special, haven't we, John? King Charles. May God bless you and keep you. Have a lovely weekend, folks. Bye for now.